Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. We've got a Swift 584 in the workshop today. And we did one of these uh, just before the end of the year, just before we broke up for Christmas and got quite a lot of uh, interest on it uh, on the YouTube channel here. And quite a few people asked us to specify when we do these walkthroughs, what chassis the vehicles are, because it's one thing that I don't ever mention. And uh, so this one's slightly different to the one that we did just before Christmas. Obviously the one that we did just before Christmas, I think was the 684. This is the 584, so a slightly different model, but this is also on the Ford chassis, whereas the one before Christmas was on the Fiat chassis. So that changes things slightly because the engine battery is under the driver's seat uh, and therefore you don't have that space to actually put the battery under there and things like that. So. Uh, this install is slightly different to that, but very similar. But I thought I would take you through it anyway, just so that you can see how we've done it, what's possible, and uh, hopefully that gives you some ideas uh, for your own van. And if you have questions, as always, drop them down below. We'd love to hear from you. And we do try and get back to people, but we get a lot of comments, so sometimes it takes us a little while to catch up on those. But let's take a look at what we've done. All right, so as I mentioned, the engine battery is under the driver's seat there and on these four chassis they usually don't have the channel or as big of a channel under here as the Fiat chassis so there is a little bit of a channel but it's quite tight it would probably be quite tight to get the wires for the multiplus through that so the route for the engine battery uh, is essentially we take the seat out when we do it we run the cable underneath the seat you can just see it in conduit there and then that goes under the trim there, and then you can find your way into the route. Take that cover off there, which covers other wires, and then that's your route to feed from the engine battery. So these seat bases on the Ford chassis are pretty enclosed. There's a couple of places where you can get wires through without having to drill holes, uh, but that back corner there is one of those where you can get it right in on the outside of the battery box where the battery sits. We usually have a bit of slack, have space for the fuse in there so it's accessible and where you can actually pull the fuse out and change it without having to change, take the seat out if necessary. So that's the feed from the engine battery. Multiplus 2 kVA on its side there. So the one drawback with this positioning is that it means that this little door can't actually open and you can't get the Multiplus over that uh, side far enough to actually get this door open uh, just because you need space for the cables to run out and things like that but it doesn't mean that the seat is completely unusable you can still use this you just don't have this door folding back uh, but if you're happy to sort of step over it if you're just uh, carrying people with you or something like that and you just need to use this jump seat then that is an option but this is where the customer opted for it to go so that everything's together from factory the leisure battery is under this uh frame for the seat anyway and so the fogstar 280 fits in there perfectly and then we put all of the other components here so we've got the orion xs there the relay to disable the split charge in the sergeant system some bus bar posts just to tidy the wiring up and have that all done correctly and then down here is the MPPT 130 for the solar system so we extend the solar wires to get into here and uh, remove the Truma MPPT that comes in the vans from factory and then uh, we replace it with a Victron MPPT here all wired into this stuff here these little blue wires here are the uh, D plus or the ignition on uh, for the relay we piggyback off that to know when the Orion XS is uh, meant to come on as well and that is fed from the sergeant system which is right behind here under this drawer so we don't actually modify the sergeant system itself per se so the split charge still works in that we just disable it using the other relay that we install just so it's non-destructive and it can be restored back to factory if necessary uh, but we also add protection for the inverter so we put an RCBO there so the inverter feeds into that and then feeds into the sergeant system and we also isolate the plug sockets from the rest of the system here so that's all working nicely so all of the plug sockets in here are now live with the inverter so a couple there and there and then a bunch dotted around the place and uh, everything here is working as it should and then of course in here is where the old MPPT used to be so that's been removed the cables extended and then we hide them behind that board there 
so it all looks good and of course the and the fridge is isolated off the inverter to, so that the auto selection still works so that when you start the engine it goes on to 12 volt when you turn the engine off if you don't have electric hookup then it goes on to gas if you have electric hookup then obviously it runs on that so that all works well okay and up here usually there's a 100 watt semi-flex panel over here but that's been removed to make space for two 185 watt panels as you can see here so they've gone from 100 watts to uh, 370 so it's a massive upgrade from what they had before uh, we you could just about get some two 215 panels on here as well uh, but the challenge is that they're a little bit longer than the 185s and uh, and wider as well so they would be extending over towards the edge of the van quite a lot because of the aircon and also they would be much more significantly shaded by the aircon so uh, we sort of looked at the options for that and decided that having slightly less solar capacity but that yields more because of less shading is better than having a, a bigger solar capacity but which would get shaded more by the aircon so it's a kind of a compromise but i think there'll be better performance from this setup so yeah pleased with how that looks and how it's all turned out so there we go hope you enjoyed that walkthrough and if like i said if you have any questions or anything drop them down below I'd love to hear from you and uh, we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching cheers